I've tried my best with it, but the neighbours come by and they sort of look over and they go, oh, look at that garden. And they say to me, you know, oh, it used to be lovely, this garden. And I'm like, I'm trying my best. I'm living here on my own. My name's Karen Bertoft. I'm an occupational therapist. I come from Barnsley and I'm about to go to Zanzibar off the coast of Tanzania as a voluntary service overseas volunteer. It's, it's something that I've wanted to do for quite a long time, but it's taken me a while to, to get the confidence in the job that I'm doing now, really, to feel that I could go and do it with less support. It's going to be a big change for me, not having my family living up the road and not having my friends nearby you know, not being able to just phone somebody up. So it's a bit like stepping into the abyss, really. Stepping into the unknown. <laughs> yes, Jim! Karen's being sent by VSO to work in a psychiatric hospital in Zanzibar. Her counterpart at the hospital is Ahmed Awad Salim. It's been very, very difficult to recruit someone to replace the previous therapist, but we're extremely happy now to hear that we have got someone at last. I'm feeling really excited actually because I don't quite believe that I'm here, but it's, it's starting to sink in now. Karen spent the last six weeks learning Kiswahili in mainland Tanzania. <laughs> Kidongo Chikundu, where Karen will be working, is Zanzibar's only psychiatric hospital. It has 150 inmates. For breakfast, they each get one cup of black tea and one bread roll. So, is this all the, yeah, the grounds the of the hospital? The ground belongs to the hospital. Yeah. Uh -huh. Up on the I'm quite worried about being able to establish good relationships with people because of their idea of mental health and how it fits into their culture and their religious views and how my view may perhaps differ to theirs. Karibu. <laughs> Asante. Asante sana. Be careful. Yeah. And coming into the wards now. This is a closed part. Yeah, this is a closed <laughs> She come up. No, I get. No, it's a joke. Missouri Sana, Missouri Sana. There are 70 inmates in the male locked ward. No matter what their illness, they're all crowded into the same walled compound. I tissue, so I hear it. Is there any, do any of the patients have any personal belongings at all? Or? They're taken by the, by the, the staff to mm. keep them until they're discharged. <coughs> this doesn't look very comfortable. Have you had these beds long, for a long time? This beds, yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The problem is don't have sufficient, sufficient mattresses, as mm -hmm. you can see. Uh, where do the patients wash and, and clean themselves? There are toilets outside. Outside. Mm -hmm. I thought the conditions were really terrible. There seems to be very little dignity allowed to the patients. Last year I found out that because of the, um, the, the poor condition of the water that there was actually over 50 patients died from cholera because the treatment wasn't available, the preventative measures weren't available. And that, I found that absolutely disgusting. I can't believe that that many people would die, you know, in one, uh, in one year, just purely from the lack of funds in the hospital. So how long will it take to get to the house? About 10 to 15 minutes walk. Oh, OK. Quite close yeah, by yeah, bicycle. Yeah. Mm. I will get fit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
The lot of things to be learned by Kevin, Zanzibar is, uh, I mean, most of its inhabitants are Muslims. So there are a lot of Islamic norms and laws. And she might have problem in the beginning adapting to those things. Well, up and down you have to here. here we are. Ah. How you Ah. Nice and cozy. Hmm. how we got living on my bed, I don't know. Is the water good so you, have to, you have to have pots to collect water. Yeah. But there is another tap outside. Ah. Continuously. Ah. So. Ule pale. Wapi? Ule pale. Ule al pumtu to ule. Ojamo. Salama. Salama. Utu zoe ya pa. More than you. Last night the, the water turned out to be a bit of a myth because um, it, the neighbours told me that it would come on about nine o'clock. Um, and I thought, oh, that would be great, I'll be able to have a nice good wash and stuff. But of course, by nine o'clock, it's actually pitch black outside. Um, so I'd kind of, stupidly really, I shouldn't have banked on the water. I mean, that's a lesson to be learned. <laughs> when it got later um, and everybody left and I was on my own, I think it was, it actually dawned on me that I was going to be here for like two years and I sort of realised how I'd be living. I think up till now it's been a bit like a, not like a holiday, but it's been difficult to sort of put it into context of your own life. You feel like it's going to pass. Yeah, can we? After sometimes you stay here, you become very, very, very sick. I mean, tiredness, you know, bones, muscles are all paining, you know, tired. There are 30 women in the female lock ward. Some stay for a few months, others a lifetime. Marion, who has a problem with alcohol, was first admitted 12 years ago. You stay in one place from morning till from morning till uh, evening, morning every day, morning evening, morning evening. You get tired, you know. The physical conditions at the hospital may be difficult, but Karen's job is to improve the patient's quality of life. Today, she's planning on card games to encourage the women to relate to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Babu Leo birthday angle. Leo, 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 Hapa, Mimi, Mimi, Dawa, Dawa, Badu, Dawa, Dawa, Dawa. Kiwa ngwa. Kiwa ngwa. This is from the bed box. Kaya ona kubo bicho. Ona kubo bicho. Sabani. I will attend there. An occupational therapist is somebody who. Um, helps people to be more independent or to improve the level of functioning through using purposeful activity. <laughs> to sit around and to not feel like they have a role in society can be very damaging for people's mental health and very damaging to their relationships with others and the way they see themselves. Yeah, I've been playing. When, whenever she comes here, Karen will play cards. We lost it. You know, the game, that, that game, six people, eh? when you get nothing, no, no card, you have to get out. You have to go out. So we have to go out. Do you mind losing? <laughs> no, it's painful. She's actually, she wants to join in the game of karate, but she can't because of, 
uh, the way that hands are at the moment. <laughs> this is because of the bed bugs and the, 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 the bites have actually become infected. The skin's all broken. <laughs> Ahmed trained as a psychiatric nurse. Mostly my work based on occupational therapy departments. The best thing is that uh, you are helping people who are sick and uh, you're trying to sort of rehabilitating them. That's what makes me happy. Karen's used to tough challenges. In England, she works as a therapist with mentally ill offenders in a secure unit. It's that kind of expertise the hospital wanted from VSO. Would I be able to get a kettle from here? A uh, kettle? Kettle. Mm. Electric kettle? Yeah. Is that 40, 40,000? Yeah, it's empty. It's empty. I think I'll have to leave the kettle oh, and come back when I've got more money. Find a good more jar. No, papaya. Get a small one. Cups and kerosene only now. There's a chronic lack of government money for the hospital. The food's minimal. Many patients suffer from vitamin deficiency and malnutrition. There's no soap for them to wash with, and they have just one set of clothes each. Sanitation is a real problem here. There's not any water to actually clean the toilets. That's one of the really big problems. You know, and the, the problems will keep reoccurring and reoccurring unless we get some water actually coming into the hospital through a well or something like that. But um, it absolutely stinks in here, absolutely reeks, it's unbearable. I wouldn't have a bit now. Come and live, come and watch your 7.30, come here. Yeah. Oh, do you want me to tattoo? Yes. Uh, yeah, but I'm... I'm uh, Nita Kwenda Kazini na um, Samoja. But everything's so hard when we can't speak the language. It's so frustrating at work, at home, when I'm going to the market to buy things. But hopefully I will learn in time and it will get easier. It's only like my first couple of weeks and I've got to try not to be too hard on myself. I've got a lot to learn from a different culture and from a different way of life and I'm really looking forward to learning a lot.
Feelings is the problem, it is a mental case. Feelings is the problem, it is a mental case. Ali is making cardboard stools as part of his occupational therapy, which is organized by Ahmed. They get to, I mean, to occupy themselves in something meaningful instead of just roaming around at home and having nothing to do. They'll be involving themselves in, in doing something. I mean, they occupy themselves. imagine sort of living in these conditions and living all together with no privacy, no personal belongings, not enough water, not enough food, having to deal with other people's illnesses as well as your own. Obviously it gets frustrating for people and obviously it's really difficult for them to live together. So every now and again, you know, disagreements do happen. Possessions are so rare here that just a small pin has become like a really precious possession for somebody. I'm sure it's just the fact that it's just traumatic and, you know, what she's been through and perhaps she's, she's thinking things about her that didn't actually happen. Not having the best of days today um, because I think it's starting to hit me that I'm here, kind of, on my own. I'm missing people quite a lot. Um, I'm not exactly at the level of crying myself to sleep every night, but I'm cer I certainly don't feel happy, particularly. Slowly from the clutch. That's whoa, 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 Excellent. I am Yeah, right, okay. Let's go. Second. Oh, no, that's not second, that's first. Let's go again, let's go again. <laughs> Where am I going to tandem? There's a car. Oh my god. Oh. It's the daily drug round and Western style medicine is in short supply. Inside the hospital, most patients don't get enough drugs to keep their illness under control. And outside the hospital, the most common form of treatment is still the traditional healer. There's a widespread belief that evil spirits cause mental illness. The majority of the patients who are brought to the, to the hospital, they seek local treatment first before switch on to Western kind of treatment. 
In Zanzibar, there is a common viewpoint that mental illness is brought upon by evil spirits um, and, and other religious things, which is external to the person who's actually suffering from the illness. They become ill because of something that they have no control over. Part of my job is introducing the idea that you can perhaps have some control over the way that you feel and the way that you react to things. It's a very different view to the one they would have and I don't really want to contradict any of their beliefs. How do you personally feel about that? You know, what do you believe happened there? Because you're, if you work in a nurse, your medical knowledge is, is different. It, it contradicts what was happening. It's a little bit different, but you know, I've been brought up in this society and before I had this, all those knowledge, I used to, to see all those kind of things. So. It's still there, you see. You said, were you scared? Sorry? Were you scared? I'm, I'm not scared. I'm not scared. <laughs> <laughs> This is the way they was taught to tie it's it. Not, it's not. It is, this is the way I was taught to do it. I haven't it. seen people put a knot like this. Yeah. It's quite strange. This is my first time to see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll check. I'll check. Yeah, this looks beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> to fit in with the female patients, Karen wears Zanzibari dress. She's just started taking them on trips outside the hospital and is asking them where they'd like to go. It's been a new idea that the patients should choose where they want to go as actually part of the activity to help them to make decisions, to talk to each other and discuss where they want to go. Sour. Sour. Is this sour? Is sour? Is sour? Is sour? Yeah. Is sour? Yeah. Oh, it's the right way yeah. to do it. Yeah, it's sour. Because yeah. about Ahmed, Ahmed, Ali Sema. Is sour? Funny. Because about Hajui. 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 Ah! These activities are really trying to integrate people back into society and also to to lift the spirits, to actually help their depression and their anxiety, <laughs> to come somewhere that's peaceful. And so that is therapeutic in itself, and that's without medication. Sawa, tayari. Sawa, The patients have now made enough cardboard stools to start selling them. After five years in the hospital, he's had his first ever outing. Karen's found a market for the stools, which go for 500 shillings, or 50 pence each. The great thing about it is that the patients actually are making these stools themselves. They're selling them themselves, and then the money goes straight back to them, and they use it to buy soap and razors, and basically it's their choice what they spend the money on. By midday, Abdi has sold four stools. Yeah, he looks quite well, I think, uh, because he's trying to do the business and it boosts up his uh, self-esteem. For her 26th birthday, Karen's invited all the staff from the hospital to celebrate with her. What Karen has initiated is quite positive and the patient has shown a lot of interest in those kind of activities. This activity was not there before and I could call them very nice changes. It is down to money and if, if we did have some more funds we could set up more rehabilitative activities. You know, people who have so many skills, they do really care about the patients and they're willing for us to work together. I love you.